seen the, uh, the top about the injury update. Just get a bit more specifics on, on Christopher and Kuku. Is he likely to be involved? No, tomorrow no. He's not going to. Still too soon. I still, well, hope soon, yes. But still, he's not involved uh, for tomorrow in the game. Is that slower than you thought? Or were you hoping? No, I think it's... Uh, like we always tell you, it's about to assess day by day the, the players that are injured. And yeah, but sometimes <clears throat> we become excited when we saw on the pitch and we want to, you know, to to have the player as soon as possible. And But I think it's, it's, uh, we need to be careful. And and of course, when we'll be ready, it's going to be with, uh, with the squad. What about Romeo? Love you. Romeo is doing well also, but still, like uh, Christophe is not involved, he's not going to be involved uh, for tomorrow. I see two, two, two <coughs> new names added to the, to the list. Ronnie Madlack and Leslie Ubechuku. Yes, Leslie feels something uh, last week. Uh, it's a minor issue, like uh, Noni after post match uh, Sunday against Brighton, I think also some minor problems. I uh, hope that soon will be uh, again available for training and, and available for, this, for the player, for the team. It's, it's a cliche question, Richard, but is now a good time to play Manchester United? No, I think it's the time. We cannot change the time. I think it's, it's always it's good to play in Old Trafford because it's an amazing place, uh, amazing stadium, fans, uh, team, club. And yes, it's a great opportunity always to play there. Uh, but I think we are all in similar level with different situations, and I don't say that it's a good a good moment to to go there. The most important is to be ready to compete because we're going to face a team that is going to be tough because they for sure they want to win, and as uh, we are a team that we want to keep our momentum to build from Brighton. <clears throat> And and to be high on the on the on the table and for us it's important. If we want to be in a different position, we, it's a game that we need to go there and try to win. You spoke about the momentum. Yes. Um, and obviously off the pitch at Chelsea now, things seem to be settled nicely. Not the case it seems uh, at Manchester United. There's a lot of noise surrounding the club about what's going on behind the scenes. No, I am not. Uh, I am focusing my club. Um, focus here. I think we need to do much better and we need to do the thing better. I think like uh, that is a process that only I, I can explain but never compare with another another club. Um, I think it's little by little, I think step by step we are building something that we believe that is going to be amazing for for the future of the club. That is a period of time that always is about to settle the things and to, you know, to and the, the thing that we won, but never to compare with another club because I think it's not fair. There's reports, and I'd ask you to comment on them, of a, of a split in, in the dressing room after half the players not liking Eric Ten Hag. Do you feel sorry for him because you've managed the egos of the biggest names in football, Mbappe, Neymar, Messi? Could you give me some advice about how, how to handle that? No. No, no, no. I think uh, I, I am only a, a coach that try to to do my best with my coaching staff, and we are no one to uh, capable to give advice to, to to my colleagues. I think they have experience, and and of course uh, I don't want to talk about what what is going on there uh, or in another place because it's not my duty. I need to be focused because we have many things to to deal with here, and no, I am very respectful, and of course I know I don't want to talk about what happened in another club. You've got a a, a better project here in a way, haven't you? Because you've got so many young players who you can mould in, in, into your way of doing things. So are you glad you were linked with the United job on several occasions? Are you glad now that you didn't take it? Uh, again, uh, I'm not going to talk about the <laughs> Yes, laugh, but you try to to make me to talk too much, <laughs> and and made a mistake. But I'm not going to make a mistake. Um, look, 
Uh, we need to be respectful with the uh, with another club. Um, I am not the person to talk what is going on in different clubs. Uh, if you ask me if I am happy here, yes, I am he- happy here in this uh, in this project, of course, uh, different to another, and and of course, and we are dealing with many situations that we need to improve also, and and of course, uh, maybe if someone see the project from outside to Chelsea, maybe some people, you know, believe that we need advices or, or opinion from outside. But I am so respectful with another club, and, and of course, we are building something here, we are working really hard, and we are 200% focused to try to evolve and develop uh, the project that we want that we want all together. And, and of course, that is my focus in, in to try to deliver the show for, for this football club. Of course, thank you. You're welcome. Seb, help me. Hi, Maurizio. Hello. Um, we often struggle to know what to expect from Chelsea going into a game this season. Do you feel that you're getting closer to knowing what to expect from your players before the match starts? Uh, sorry, you can repeat the question because... So, we Chelsea are quite inconsistent and we don't really know what to expect from the players on the pitch before the game starts. That is a... Uh, how you feel, no? Yeah, it's your opinion. Do you feel similar? Like, do you no. feel like your players don't always live up to your expectations? No, only once. Was uh, I think this season is only one game that was uh, Newcastle that we were all disappointed because I think we expect a different different performance from the team. And in now in four, 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 five months that we are working together, it's, it's only once. We were consistent in our performance and then uh, we didn't get the result maybe that we deserve. That is true. But of course, disappointed with the Newcastle game because then we deserve the, to lift the three points. That is only the, the ones that we were disappointed with the performance. But on the end, always expectation. I think they cover the expectation. It's only that the result, you cannot judge the performance or you cannot judge the expectation because of the result. You know? um, how much has this Brighton game um, strengthened your thoughts about this team's character, the, their ability to fight the game through till the end? Yes, of course, uh, that was good for us. I think when you analyse the game, I think you feel proud because I think in the way that we start the first half and we play, I think uh, again a very good team like is Brighton, and then after our situation and try to change our, you know, feelings. Uh, after Newcastle was a really tough game for us, not only because we were facing a very good team like Brighton, if not because it was playing in us, you no, know, and try to <clears throat> to show different face. Uh, I think. Uh, was tired after the game, and in, in the press conference, I think I didn't understand a little bit the question and say sorry, you know, and apologize because I was tired after all the interview. But you know, because I seen uh, the players deserve more credit because to play more than 60 minutes with one less and then a team that is uh, is really good, and we didn't concede too much and then score with one player less. I think was. Uh, great for, for our our player and for the team to really believe. And that is uh, things, areas that we need to build and to feel very comfortable. And one was of to have the possibility to fight all together and show character and, and, and togetherness. And that is so important. Like I told, before to talk about tactics, before to talk about philosophy or methodology, it's about to, to be all together and, and the design and to want to belong to the club, to belong to the, this philosophy, this club, this uh, group of players fighting all together. And if we are capable to feel like this, I think after we can evolve and we can develop any way to, to play. And finally, for me, what do you think is Manchester United's biggest threat on the pitch? No, I think they are very good players. I've seen uh, the pace of their offensive player. We cannot allow them to transit. We need to uh, we need to be careful in the way that we are going to in our build up and how we are going to finish and going to lose the, the ball. I think we need to we need to be clever, no, in the way that we are going to try to 
they're not allowed to transit, you know, because they when they record the world, they they are uh, they have places in front like Rashford, Arnacho, you know, different players that can you know uh, transit really fast. Uh, and yes, and then he's trying to dominate and try to put pressure and, and to play in the opposite half. I think that's going to be the challenge for us. Thank you. Thank you. Ruben, yeah. Hi, sir. Chelsea still have a massive squad. I mean, how, how much of a problem has that been for you and you looking to reduce those numbers? No, no massive. We have good squad. I think we are happy with the squad. Only that... The problem is that we have too many, from the beginning of the season, we deal with too many injuries, unexpected. And yes, that is a problem, but if you see tomorrow, the squad is going to be, uh, in, uh, too many young guys will be involved from the academy. Played really well against some of the big teams this year. <laughs> what? Why is that? Why did Chelsea turn up in these games? Well, I explain, if you follow my press conference, I think already explained that the... It's about to be more consistent. It's about to, you know, to be more mature like a team, and and of course, uh, that only is going to come with with time. What do you think That's of fun, maybe. Eric Ten Hag as a manager? What does he bring to the table? Sorry. What do you think of Eric Ten Hag as a manager? Ah, he's a fantastic coach. Uh, I remember that we faced, when I was in Tottenham, the semi-finals of Champions League against Ajax. And I seen everyone was talking about uh, Ajax or him. And I said, for me, he's a fantastic coach, a great manager. And yes, and, and I seen it's, it's good to see him And after four years, because I think we we didn't play no, after, no, after the semi-final in Ajax. Uh, we have not the pleasure to, again, to, to go with it because we were in Paris and never was the coincidence to play Champions League. And now is the possibility to, to see him again. Good luck. You're welcome. Okay. Last question in this section, Liam. Hi, Maurice. Hi. Um, we've had a very consistent midfield in the last few weeks. Uh, do you need to find a different balance in midfield now with Gallagher suspended and Ogre uh, injured? No, I think it's not going to change too much. I think if you see the squad available for tomorrow, it's not difficult to to see what is going to to, see, uh, to my my decision or my choice. I think it's not too many options, and but of course I am happy. I think I am sure that we are going to do a, a good game. Yeah. Thank you. Cameras off, please. Thanks, Richard. You're welcome. That's the end of TV.